네, 안녕하세요. 아나운서 박지원입니다. 오늘은 국내 유일 로봇 전문 애널리스트 로봇 체크 씨와 함께 이야기 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. So it's nice to have you today. Would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? You're known as Rob the Robot, right? Rob the Robot guy, yes. Yeah. Thank you. And it's a pleasure being here and it's a real pleasure meeting you. Um, my name is Rob or Robert Sheik. I'm the Robotics and Emerging Technologies Analyst mm -hmm. at Hyundai Motor Securities, which is the investment banking arm of the Hyundai Motor Group. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been here for and how long have you been in the robot industry? So I've been in Korea on and off for about 15 years. Wow, um, 15 years. Yeah, but on and off. I've done a lot of what to get between countries. Yeah. Um, and in the robots industry specifically, it's mm -hmm. been about, time flies, doesn't it? Um, 10 mm -hmm. years? Yeah. <laughs> So I think a lot of people would be curious about how you happen to land in Korea mm -hmm. and work in the research analyst as a robot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, prior to joining Hyundai, um, yeah. I did work as a director of business development at the innovation team at uh, Eugene Robotics, mm -hmm. um, where I spearheaded the, the go-kart, which was one of the world's first autonomous mobile robots, or AMRs. Um, while I was working there, um, the current head uh, of research for Hyundai contacted me for the role with Hyundai Motor Securities. Mm. Um, I had actually worked with him at a different securities firm in, in oh. the past, so we had we knew each other. Not in Korea, but in other countries? No, actually in Korea. Oh, in Korea, yes. okay. So, but not at Hyundai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I think there must be a reason why you chose Korea. And I mean, US, Japan are also developed in robots, but what's the difference and what's the competitiveness that it has? So when we when we look at the robotics industries of the United States, mm -hmm. um, Korea, Japan, and some European countries, specifically like uh, Germany or Denmark or mm -hmm. or the UK, um, the United States leads in areas like defense. That's where um, the robotics and of course AI are very strong in that area. With Japan, um, there are a lot of uh, great companies in Japan as well, mm -hmm. but what they've really been good at is their marketing machine. So, oh. and I think a good example of that would be like during the Fukushima earthquake with the Asimo, mm -hmm. the Honda Asimo. The robot was great, it looked cool, mm -hmm. it did lots of neat stuff, but it couldn't do anything. And so oh. a lot of people died. So I think with, with um, the technology in Japan, mm -hmm. they have technology, but a lot of it's not really practical. Where in Korea, there's a lot of really interesting work that's going on. Uh, much mm -hmm. of it's behind the scenes. It's not really oh, public. Yeah. So behind a lot of initiatives and organizations like DARPA or so even in the US, there are Korean technologists and Korean companies working there. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's uh, there's a lot of promise and a lot of interesting work that's taking place here. That's, oh, okay. that's what. So I introduced to you in the opening that you believe that Korea will be leading the future of the robot industry. but. Compared to that, you're the only analyst in mm -hmm. Korea mm -hmm. who are specialized in robots. So why is it so many, why aren't people digging into that analyst? I think on, on a couple levels. First, as, as a business, and especially as mm -hmm. a listed pure play robotics companies, mm -hmm. um, these are relatively new. There's very oh. few still that are you know, on stock market exchanges that are robotics companies mm -hmm. only. Um, because of this, there are very few analysts that actually cover robotics specifically or specialize in robotics. Um, as mentioned earlier, most am analysts simply add robotics to their to their existing coverage. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're doing uh, pandoche or semiconductors, and then they'll like and robotics or c electronics oh. and robotics. Yeah. But I think that's going to change um, simply because we are now approaching the kind of hockey stick of growth with robotics. Uh -huh. How big is the global market, the robot markets, and how big is Korea growing into it? So really, there's there's several ways to, mm -hmm. to measure um, the size of the market. Yeah. Um, I guess the broadest way to do so would be by segmenting, or the simplest way, segmenting robotics into industrial robots, or robotics, and service robotics. So in two ways. Um, that's the broadest way to do okay. it. Um, it. It gets it gets quite fragmented. Uh -huh. um, so that would be a start, mm -hmm. um, and that's how most uh, press, most um, 
investment firms measure the market, oh. but it's, I think it's somewhat misleading. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, there's several reasons. Mm -hmm. um, robotics is, um, is basically a discipline that is a, a technology of confluences. Mm -hmm. um, so they encompass AMRs, autonomous mobile robots, mm -hmm. uh, UAVs or, or drones, uh, collaborative robots, uh, cobots, uh, autonomous vehicles, AVs, like robot taxis, trucks, unmanned ground vehicles, we call them UGVs. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this includes cars, big trucks, um, underwater uh, unmanned vehicles, mm -hmm. um, service robots of all sorts, yeah. medical robots, rehabilitation, surgery, <laughs> uh, toy robots. Is it going until tomorrow? <laughs> yes, yes, it will. Space robots consume um, sensors. So as you can see, it's there's just so many. Yeah. Um, th th and then there's crossovers, not only within those segments, um, but and also the use cases for mm -hmm. the robots. So yeah, it, it's quite challenging to, to measure that. Okay. So. With that said, the global robotics market was valued at around $27, $28 billion in 2020, and it's expected to reach about $74.1 billion by wow. 2026, which amounts to a, a CAGR of around 17.45% um, from 2021 to 2026. However, in the interest of brevity, we'll focus on the service robotics market, as mm. this is the segment that is the fastest growing and the most widely covered by oh. the media. So Korea's service robot market alone mm -hmm. um, is going to grow to around 230,000 robots by 2025. That's not a long time. No, it's not. It's happening now. Oh. And I think that's a conservative number, actually. Mm -hmm. And this is worth about 2.8 trillion won, oh. or 2.25 US, uh, billion US dollars. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and as of 2020, it's the size grew 34.9% um, on year to 857 billion won. The numbers are too big that right. I can't imagine like how big it is. Right, it's it's, it's really it's just it's impressive growth. Wow. And, and and already in Korea, the service robotics market has surpassed industrial robots. Wow. So this has already happened. The number of robot employees in the U.S. has increased for about 40 percent and due to the lack of workers and especially due to COVID-19. Mm. But we don't see this much in Korea. Mm. So I would like to ask you about that. So actually, we're seeing this this happening in Korea um, and the rest of the developed world. Um, most people, they generally don't take note of the robots that are operating around them. Mm -hmm. um, because often the, these robots, they just look like some piece of equipment. Oh. So they're not, that is, they're not anthropomorphic. They don't have a smiling face or something yeah, like something this. Yeah, something that we see in animations like Taekwondo. Like Taekwondo. Oh, okay. Um, so they're just doing their jobs like cleaning the floor or something like this. Oh. And you just don't notice. It's not a heavy question. Hmm. When the robot delivered the coffee, mm -hmm. they found out that it was all spilt. And they were like, oh my God, who do we have to complain this to? Because it's a robot. They can't speak. It's like, right? what can we do? That's a very good question. And it's a, it's a question that's actually raised by, by many people involved in the robotics oh, industry. Okay. Who is liable uh -huh. for an autonomous car? Is it the software? Yeah. Is it the car maker? Mm -hmm. Is it uh, who's liable? Right. So that's a great question. Um, <laughs> Someone else. <laughs> oh, someone else. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think as of now, the, the, it would probably be the robotics company. Again, this is an issue that's just an ongoing debate. Who's oh, liable? So we have to call the company call because the com of this one coffee. Yeah, yeah it would be like Bedal Minchok. Um, same thing. Like you were supposed <laughs> to be. Minchok. Right, um, okay. which has robots too. But anyways. <laughs> So there are actually delivery robots being deployed all over the mm -hmm. world. Um, as you know, investments are pouring into the business because of one, the relative ease of building and deploying these kinds of robots, uh, two, mm -hmm. surging labor costs, mm -hmm. and three, greater demand for deliveries, not only for food, but merchandise as well. And there, there are many companies building delivery robots. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost uncountable at this point. Uh, the most known and well-funded is a company called Starship or Starship Technologies. Uh, 
um, which en enjoys a, a first mover advantage because they've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. Having said that, the most promising and the furthest ahead in terms of technology um, is a Silicon Valley based company called Serve Robotics. Oh, I, I think I had that one. Yeah, yeah. They, um, th they were spun out of Uber um, mm -hmm. in 2021. And in December of last year, the Serve started running level four delivery robots. What's level four robots? Level four, yeah. I mean, it's really, um, it means the robot is autonomous, it does not need a human. Oh. Um, so this, this was a huge milestone uh -huh. in the evolution of robotics and AI. But as of today, Inserve is the only company to reach this level of autonomy. Yeah. And, and this represents nothing less than a massive jump forward in terms of the economic potential that will soon be realized with these robots. Oh. So yeah, it's, it's in robotics is huge news. So almost all the other companies um, still use what we in the business call a robot wrangler. Mm -hmm. which What's is, the wrangler? Wrangler's like, um, you know, cowboys. Yeah. And you know, they, they have the cows and they have the lasso. And they, yeah. Yeah, they, they're, <laughs> they're wandering and they kind of bring them together and yeah. make sure they're going in the right direction. So in robotics with these delivery robots, you have someone who is kind of behind the scenes uh -huh. watching on screens to kind of control the robots. Oh, it's like a, can we think of it as a sheepdog? Like yeah, everybody. yeah. Sheepdog, robot wrangler, oh. but exactly, you're exactly right. So the thing about the robot wrangler is it's really nothing more than a human operating the robot remotely, so, oh. like this, um, or we say teleoperating. Mm -hmm. A level four robot, however, is able to navigate fully autonomous, autonomously without humans in the loop, which means companies can have one human monitoring a giant fleet of robots. That's kind of scary. Right, and <laughs> without having to need, and that means pay, yeah. uh, human operators behind the scene, and this translates into a huge reduction in cost. Whereas everything following the money, the cost, <laughs> to well, reduce cost. On the business level, yes. I think oh. on the technology development level, I think uh, many people developing these technologies have just an interest in kind of the pure science, mm -hmm. but you know behind that is the business case, right? Mm, money. So yeah, I mean for years, robots that have an AI were plagued with you know I've got a great idea, okay that's a cool robot, mm -hmm. what does it do? Oh. And that's been a problem for many many years in oh. the industry, but that's obviously that's changed mm -hmm. in Korea uh, as with most uh, everything else in the country the widespread de development of such robots will happen and actually is happening mm -hmm. very quickly. Um, I believe that indeed this may be at an unprecedented rate of growth. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, this is already happening because of the rising labor costs here, um, safety issues for say like um, delivery drivers on the scooters, things yeah. like this, and, um, th and the declining costs of robots. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact that is that there's been a lot of activity going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes to develop these technologies over the past five years, and we're just now starting to see them in growing numbers in, in mm -hmm. several public venues. Oh. So you, you'll blink and then you'll open your eyes and like, wait, these things are everywhere. Do domestic robot component makers and finished robot manufacturers produce more compared to other companies, like global companies in mm -hmm. the market? So it depends on the basis on which we evaluate the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of total robot density, Korea is ranked number one. It has mm -hmm. highest robot density in the world. Oh. And Hyundai is the largest manufacturer of industrial robots in the country. Um, however, in other areas, um, specifically service robotics, medical mm -hmm. robotics, or defense. Mm -hmm. uh, American and European companies uh, have more market share and ship more units. Um, for high value components, uh, again, American and European companies also take the lion's share. Oh.